Right, well I thought I'd do a, a quick YouTube video on something I'm interested in. I, I'm, I really do enjoy researching World War I and especially these World War I medals. We can do a wee bit of research into them and find out the history. So you might be wondering why I've got a, a pistol alongside with the title the gun that started World War I. Well this is a, a Browning FN 1910 and um, the gun very similar to this it's a little pocket pistol only seven millimeter caliber and it was your boy Galrillo Princip used it to shoot Archduke Ferdinand and uh, arguably they say it was this shot that uh, started or precipitated World War One. Yeah, it's a fascinating gun actually. Um, and I didn't realise until quite recently. I picked this up at a military fair a few years ago. And before internet and all this sort of stuff carried on, I didn't really realise you could do so much research into them. So I just thought I'd look into this gun because I'm fascinated with World War One, And I really do believe that this is one of the most important guns of, of that time. So it was made by Browning, you can see the stamp on it there, and it's the FN 1910, and it was, I think it was between 1910 and 1980, I think these were produced, and there's so many markings on these things, it's actually quite, you can actually f um, find out you know, almost the, the history of each gun. So it's got this fabric and it's got all these names and all right back to you and it was basically produced in, in Belgium, Belgique. Now on the other side of it, this is a deactivated one by the way so unfortunately I can't field strip it. But it does, it does uh, move the, the slide and the, the wee, oh, this, show you there's a wee clip here and it slides out this. Um, spring loaded. I'll need to move it out of shot and then bring it back to you again. Brings out the wee magazine. It's amazing the, the engineering that goes into these things. So it's a deactivated one, so it can be owned by anybody. And uh, fascinating. So on the other side of this, <coughs> let's get these serial numbers. Now, I kind of hope this was going to be a World War I one, because that is my era, so to speak. Um, but I think there was only about 70 or 80,000 of these made prior to World War, or during World War I. And I can see this one's 245,000 odd. So we reckon this was 1920s model. Uh, and very, very faintly, you can just sort of see in it, there's... I don't know if that's going to come through too clearly or not. But um, this went to Australia. And it was Alcock and Pierce. Is actually what that says. Alcock and Pierce, Melbourne. And it's, you know, we can just about see Alcock and Pierce, Melbourne. So this was made in Belgium, 1920s. Headed down to Australia. And I've seen a lot of wear because these handles are horn and you can just see it. I mean, I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm going to have to do a bit more research on this, but I would say it's very high likelihood this was a World War II, used in World War II. You can see it's quite worn there. The stocks are well worn. But it's still a lovely, lovely little pistol. That's the safety mechanism, apparently. Just put that up and then that stops the slider going back and forward. But anyway, young Gavrello Princip used a very similar one to shoot Archduke Ferdinand, as I was saying there, to start uh, World War One. And I uh, don't know if we, you know about Gavrello Princip. He was fortunate in a way in the sense that whenever he carried out the assassination he was only 19. And you would have thought such a, a massive event would have gotten him the death penalty. But actually no. He was given 20 years in jail. He never actually managed to, to survive it anyway. He died before the end of World War I in 1918 of tuberculosis. 
after having his arm amputated due to the disease. Uh, he always denied that that shot was responsible for starting the series of events of World War One, but I think you would have to say it, that it would have been that. <coughs> now, apparently the way you strip these down is <coughs> there's a wee, I don't know if you can see that there, you can get a wee tool or sometimes not, and that sort of serrated edge there turns to the left 90 degrees and then this comes out and there's a big spring in here but there's a few videos on youtube to show that but this is why i purchased this particular gun because i thought it <coughs> a fascinating history and because i like the world war one research i thought this would be a nice addition to um to my collection but i'd be fascinated to know if anybody out there would know how i could find out if that is <coughs> or was used by the australian army in world war ii I picked it up in England, so made in Belgium, went to Australia, perhaps was used in World War II, turned up at a military fair in England. So this wee gun's been all around the world, travelled a lot more than me, I'd have to say, and seen I'm sure a lot of <coughs> a lot of events in its life going by the shape of the stock and how much wear has been put into that handle. Anyway, I just thought it was quite interesting. So, the gun that started World War One.